your tropical weather update for Saturday, June 16th. Hurricane Carlotta has moved inland over the past 24 hours and is now down to tropical depression status as it begins to rain itself out over the high terrain of southern Mexico. And this is still going to play a role in the potential for western Gulf of Mexico development in roughly five to eight days time. And we also have this tropical wave that you really can't detect on satellite imagery too well but it's still analyzed by the Hurricane Center as passing to the south of Hispaniola and both the remnants of Carlotta or at least some of the remnants of Carlotta along with this westward moving tropical wave are going to rendezvous over the western Gulf and Bay of Campeche. We also still need to consider the very strong upward motion pulse moving into the western hemisphere and this is promoting tropical activity to increase across the Gulf and Caribbean and technically speaking the MJO is currently in phase 8 and this is when the MJO starts to become favorable for tropical development in the Gulf of Mexico and West Caribbean and it's still forecast by a number of forecast models to move into phases 1 and 2 which is typically even more favorable. Compared to one week ago this satellite animation is somewhat active with increasing convection across the Caribbean and Gulf so the MJO or Madden Julian oscillation is already having somewhat of an effect and if we take a more detailed look at the satellite, once again, you really can't make out that tropical wave passing south of Hispaniola too well. But this tropical wave, as it moves more toward the west-northwest in the general direction of the Yucatan Peninsula, it is going to help carry that broad area of low pressure, which is essentially your monsoon trough. It's going to help carry this a little bit more toward the north. And also the remnant moisture of Carlotta is also going to get shunted toward the northeast. And so where these two intersect, that is where your greatest chance of tropical development is going to occur down the road. In the more immediate future, however, we're still looking at some of the isolated shower and thunderstorm activity located immediately toward the south near Louisiana and Mississippi. However, we're not really worried about any type of tropical development from that feature. As you can see, we have a late season trough in the mid to upper levels that has made its way all the way into the Bahamas and Florida Keys. This trough extends westward all the way through the central gulf where the wind shear values are in excess of 40 to 50 knots, which is way too high for any type of organized tropical activity. This is the shear depiction from the University of Wisconsin and those darker yellow and red colors, especially just north of the Yucatan Peninsula, are showing 40 to 50 knots of shear. But look off toward the southwest near the Mexican Riviera. We still have wind shear values generally lower than 20 knots, which is still favorable. And that is associated with the upper level ridge that supported Hurricane Carlotta for several days. And the GFS is handling all of this quite well. This is the current initialized shear pattern that the GFS sees and it correctly has the wind shear across the central gulf. It also correctly has the upper level ridge centered near the Gulf of Tuanapec. Fast forward to seven days out and all of a sudden we have that upper level ridge expanding and centered directly over the west central gulf of Mexico and whenever you see this in the deep tropics it at least alerts you to pay attention to that area. Meanwhile the latest precipitable water animation is also rather interesting. You can see that this tropical plume of moisture associated with the tropical wave now in the Caribbean is continuing to move off toward the west northwest and this is going to be moving over the Yucatan Peninsula in just a few days but also toward the end of the animation you can see this broad monsoon low also beginning to reorganize and that tropical wave axis is going to carry it back into the Gulf of Mexico. In the 850 millibar theta E forecast from the GFS, you're going to easily notice two distinct areas moving into the Gulf, one being that monsoon low that we're hyping about so much over the last couple of minutes, and the remnants of Carlotta. So as the tropical wave begins to interact with that broad monsoon trough, it's going to bring it more toward the northwest, as you can see here. And we also have this added moisture coming in from Carlotta, and this is going to set the stage for tropical development in the model. And as we can see, as we go into days 6 and 7, there is obviously some type of area of low pressure, if not a bona fide tropical storm sitting just off to the southeast of Brownsville, Texas. Now, the more detailed sea level pressure forecast that you are probably a little bit more accustomed to shows nothing more than some disorganized shower and thunderstorm activity over the next 96 hours. But even here into 45 hours, so this is Monday morning, you can see that broad area of low pressure in the West Caribbean down to 1,009 millibars, but more importantly it moves off toward the west-northwest and finally once it gets into the Gulf of Mexico it's more successful in drawing in some of that eastern Pacific moisture and finally as we go into Friday and the start of next weekend 
we obviously have a 1003 millibar area of low pressure trying to form into a tropical depression or a tropical storm so this does bear a little bit of watching. Switching over to the CMC model it should be noted that the CMC has been very inconsistent over the last several runs sometimes it shows tropical development and then quickly thereafter it drops the tropical cyclone in the model simulation but as we go into day four the latest 12Z run has a broad area of low pressure just to the north of the Bay of Campeche going into day five you can still see the area of low pressure moving toward the northwest and finally by day six it has a 1002 millibar tropical storm moving into coastal Texas and finally this is the day four ECMWF forecast much like the GFS and CMC we have a broad 1006 or 1007 millibar surface low pressure area near the Bay of Campeche and as we go into days five and six this area of low pressure perhaps deepens a little bit more but it's definitely very broad in the Euro model so it's not really picking up on a true tropical cyclone development just yet and also by day seven we still have this mid-level ridge centered over the central half of the country and if that ridge were to stay in place it's going to be hard to get any tropical cyclone to move due north into that ridge but any weakness that may evolve over the next week or so is going to have to be monitored if a weakness develops more than expected then we could see more of a northerly track as indicated by the GFS and Canadian CMC but as of right now the European is just showing a broad low that stays fairly close to the Mexican coast. So that's all we have for you at this hour. Keep it tuned to 28storms.com and the Hurricane Tracker app for more daily video updates. And also please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. You can find us at youtube.com slash 28storms and we love the comments underneath each video whether it be critiquing our video analysis or even if you have a slightly different forecast we're open to pretty much anything that our viewers have to say. So please go ahead and subscribe. That way you don't miss any video updates. So we'll see you here again soon.